Hello, my name is Alicia, and today I'm going to be reading to you from this book, Managing by the Numbers, by Chuck Kremer, or Kremer and Ron Rizzuto with John Case. Now, this might not be the most fascinating information you've ever heard in your entire life, but it is vital. So let's begin with the introduction, and I will be joined in future videos with my by my friend Jen who is currently taking classes in this very subject so let us begin with the introduction what you will learn from this book just to make sure this is the right book for you we want to ask you a few questions do you get complete financial reports on your business at least every month do you understand what all those numbers mean if you ask your accountant to explain them, can you make sense of what he or she tells you? Most important, do you use the information in those reports to help you make smart decisions about your business? If the answer to any of one of these questions is no, don't be alarmed. You're in good company. We bet 50% of small company owners and managers don't get complete timely information about their business's financial performance. We also bet that fully 90% don't really understand or use the information they do see. This should come as no surprise. After all, not many people who start or run their own business are trained in accounting or financial analysis. Sure, maybe you took a course or two in school, but how much do you really remember? Since we teach finance for a living, we'd like to think that our students treasure every word and remember every concept all their lives. Reality, alas, doesn't always live up to our hopes. Anyway, if you answered no to any of the three questions, this is the book for you. It will teach you what complete financial reports are and how to understand them. It will show you how to use the information to run a better, more profitable company. Do you really need to know this stuff? We think you do, but not because we believe that every business person should be a bean counter. Rather, it's because running a company is hard. You need every tool at your disposal, and good financial information is ex an extremely powerful tool. Maybe, for instance you, you, instance, you found yourself in situations like these. You're working your tail off, and the company is growing. Your accountant tells you that the company is profitable. Great bottom line last quarter, Tom but you're always scrambling to pay the bills because there's never any cash in the bank. How come? Business was great last year and you want to expand into a new facility, but your banker takes one look at your financials and shakes her head. You haven't got the cash flow to support the loan you're asking, asking for, she says. Your puzzle. Hasn't business been good? A new competitor opened up down the street and you're feeling the pinch. You know you have to make some cuts, but where? What product lines are least profitable? If you let some people go, how much will you really save? Financial information can help you solve these problems. It can also help you take advantage of opportunities. In fact, it can help you make many of the tough decisions that business owners and managers must make every day. You wouldn't fly, fly a plane without all the dials and gauges that show you where you're headed and whether everything's working the way it's supposed to. Similarly, you don't want to run a business without the reports and information that show you where you're on track, where you're not, and whether the company is really making money. Having said that, we want to clarify a couple of things. First, this isn't a book about accounting. We assume you know some of the basic terms of finance, such as depreciation, profit, and assets. Appendix 3 in the back of the book provides a glossary if you're a little shaky on some of these terms. But we don't assume you know how to debit one account and credit another or to calculate different methods of depreciation. What's more, we aren't going to teach you that stuff. People who run businesses don't need to be accountants. They only need to make sure that their accountants and their accounting software give them the information they need and that they know what to do with it. Second, what's in this book isn't just a few lessons in the basics of financial analysis, lessons that any old accountant or professor could teach you if he or she had the time. Rather, this book presents a unique approach to understanding the financials of your business, an approach that's as simple and as powerful as anything we have come across in our many, many years of teaching and working with businesses. It shows you 
why you need three separate financial statements, three bottom lines in effect, if you want a complete evaluation of your business's performance. Even today, many managers and accounting professionals rely only on one or two. It shows you how all these financial statements fit together and it provides you with a handy tool that summarizes the three bottom lines at a glance. This tool was developed by a pioneering thinker at IBM, the late Lou Mobley, and has been incorporated into the Financial Game for Decision-Making Seminar produced by Educational Discoveries Incorporated. It explains what drives the three bottom lines and shows you how to manage your business so as to optimize your company's performance on all three measures. It shows you how to create plans to realize your company's goals, plans that you can actually make happen because they're grounded in financial reality. In short, this is a book not for students of accounting, but for managers and company owners who need or want to know how their business is really doing. It's a book that will help you run your company better. The plan of this book follows this simple outline. Part one is a quick review of the three basic financial statements. If you're pretty sure you know what these statements are and what they show, skip them or even skip ahead to part two. However, we, however, we urge you not to skip chapter four on cash flow statements unless you're entirely clear on how cash flow statements differ from, differ from income statements. That difference and the importance of tracking cash flow directly are the two key lessons in this book. Part two explains why it's never enough to look at any of these statements in isolation. It shows you, it shows how the three statements and the three bottom lines fit together. It explains the financial scoreboard, a tool that lets you see the big financial picture of your company at a glance. Part three puts all this knowledge to work. It looks at the key drivers of each bottom line and what you have to do to optimize each one. It shows you how to use forward-looking financial information, that is, plans and projections that indicate what must happen if your company is to reach its goals. When you have finished this book, we want to hear from you, particularly still if you have questions. The book, after all, is only as good and as useful as you find it to be. If you read it and don't understand something, we want to know what it is. Here's how to get in touch with Chuck Aran. Chuck Kramer, 8632 West Warren Drive, Lakewood, Colorado, 80227. And it's Chuck underscore B-U-S-L-I-T-E-R-A-C-Y at CompuServe.com. Or Ron Rizzuto, R-I-Z-Z-U-T-O. 5124 South Jamaica Way, Anglewood, Colorado, 80111. And it's R R I Z as in zebra, Z as in zebra, U T as in Tom, O at D as in doll, U as in under, dot E D U. For a demonstration of software that allows you to create financial score, scoreboard described in this book, you may visit Inc. Magazine's website at www.inc.com backslash Inc. Products. Search under Finance. For additional information and resources on financial management for your growing business, visit www.inc.com or www.ed, as in David, I-S-C-O-V-E-R-I-E-S inc.com that's ed ed e discoveries incorporated.com and provant p is in peter r o v is in victor a n t dot com managing by the numbers part one all you really need to know about financial statements two words on accounting chapter one why your company's checkbook doesn't tell you everything you need to know wouldn't it be great if companies didn't need accounting? Business owners would save money. They wouldn't have to listen to all that financial jargon and feel dumb because they don't understand it. If you look at households, it's tempting to believe that accounting is really unnecessary. Households have money coming in and money going out, just like businesses. But most families don't need an accountant and they can tell you that they're doing just how they're doing just by looking at their bank accounts, their outstanding loans, and a few other numbers. 
can a business be run out of a checkbook in much the same way? Unfortunately, it can't. Well, it can, but that's a surefire path to trouble. The fact is, we're not big believers in many conventional accounting practices. We think that most financial statements are too hard to understand. We think they don't tell you everything you need to know. In this book, ironically, we'll be emphasizing the importance of a direct cash flow statement, which many accountants ignore, and which isn't so different from checkbook style accounting. But we don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. We believe that the underlying principles of accounting are sound. We think it's a mistake to run any business, no matter how small, out of a checkbook as if it were a household. The reasons aren't hard to understand. First, more people are likely to have claims on a business's money. You know that the money in your family's bank account is yours. Sure, there are claims on it. The mortgage has to be paid every month, but the claims aren't hard to keep track of. Money in your business's bank account, however, is likely to have more claims on it. The bank that gave you a loan has a claim. So do the vendors that sold you the good and services and the company that leases you your equipment. Your employees have to be paid at the end of the week or the end of the month. And don't forget Uncle Sam. Every day a business operates is likely to incur a tax liability of some sort. Just looking at your business's checkbook balance doesn't tell you about all these claims. How much of that money has to go to taxes? How much should you set aside for loan payments? Not many of us can keep track of all of a business's obligations in our head. Second, businesses rarely operate on an all-cash basis. If your family is like most, your home accounts are relatively simple. You get a paycheck. You use, use the cash at the grocery store or the gas station. You pay your bills. At the end of the month, you have a pretty good idea of how you're doing, provided you're not strung out on credit cards. With the business, it isn't so easy. Most businesses' transactions consist of a sale, essentially a promise or agreement, and a lat lat later settlement, which is then when the money changes hands. Unless you keep track of both parts, you really don't know how you're doing. To take a simple example, suppose you're a general contractor and you've just started a remodeling job. The customer has paid you 30% up front, so you have plenty of cash in the bank, but you haven't really earned that money yet. By the same token, when a job is nearly nearing an end, you'll be in a different situation. You'll be out of pocket for your materials and labor, but you won't have collected that final payment from the customer. You'll have earned more than you have collected in cash. Financial statements show both the earned part and the cash part, or at least it should. Third, businesses have to make more complex financial decisions. Most families' financial decisions aren't too complex. Families have to be sure their money, their income covers their expenses, preferably with a little left over. They have to balance spending on current needs with saving for future needs. That may be hard to do, but it isn't complex. The people who own or run a business face more complex decisions. They must decide when to invest in new equipment or a new location. They must figure out whether it's worthwhile to take a loan or to hire another person. They must determine whether one line of business is as profitable as another. You simply can't make these decisions intelligently without good accounting information. That means you need a good accountant, good accounting software that you both that you that you know how to use or both. Moreover, the value of a business in the long run depends on its financial performance. If your goal is, goal is to build up your business and keep it in good financial health so that you can eventually sell it or pass it to your children, you must have a complete picture of how it's doing month to month and year to year. Once again, you need the information that only an accounting system can provide. If you're like a lot of business owners and managers, you've heard of all this before. So what do you do? Many business owners, particularly if they run one person shops, just get a certified public accountant, CPA, to prepare their tax returns every year, figuring that the tax returns tell them how they're doing. Trouble is, a tax return may be the worst of all financial statements for running a company. You see it only once a year. 
It often contains both cash and non-cash items such as depreciation and so it can leave you more confused than ever about whether you're really making money. In fact, good accountants will employ all sorts of perfectly legal techniques to reduce your bottom line on the tax return so as to minimize your current tax liability. The information you're required to provide the IRS is not the information you need to run the company effectively. The next step beyond managing by tax return is obtaining and looking at monthly or quarterly financial statements. We hope you're already doing this because it's a great first step, but it is only a first step and many accountants will tell you straight out that yes, indeed, you really do need more information than those statements typically provide. Also, as we said in the introduction, not many business people understand or make good use of the financial statements they do get. When it comes down to believing their financials or their company's checkbook, they go to the checkbook every time. This is too bad because financial statements don't have to be as obscure or hard to understand as sometimes they sometimes are. What's more, good financial reports show you what the money you have in your checkbook really means. They tell you important information such as how your company has performed financially over time, whether you have a sufficient cushion against business downturn, how you stack up financially against your competitors in the industry, whether you have spent too much or little on equipment, how you're doing at collecting the money your customers owe you, whether you'll be able to make payments on your outstanding loans, and whether you can afford to pay yourself more than you have in the past. Along with the answers to many similar questions, it's all right there in the balance sheet, the income statement, and the cash flow statement. We'll take up these issues one at a time in the chapters that follow. We'll dissect them line by line and show you what each statement reveals about your business. Once that's done, we'll go on to discuss how the three financial statements fit together and how you can use the information they provide to build a stronger, better performing company.